The first reading today is from Matthew 11, verses 28 to 30. Then Jesus said, Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give to you is light. The second reading today is from John 14, verses 1 to 6. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God and trust also in me. There is more than enough room in my father's home. If, there, if this were not so, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? When everything is ready, I will come and get you, so that you will always be with me where I am, and you know the way to where I am going. No, we don't know, Lord, Thomas said. We have no idea where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. Good morning and welcome to Ellenbrook Baptist Church's on service online. Whether you're a regular viewer or whether you view every now and again or perhaps you're even a first time viewer, welcome. And I trust that as we share some of the words that Jesus spoke while he walked on earth, we'll be blessed as we share together this morning. My name is Tony Van Cool. I'm a member of Allenbrook Baptist Church and I have the privilege this morning to share God's word. Before we get into the word, let us ask God's blessing and ask his Holy Spirit to guide us as we pray together. Father, we thank you for your Holy Spirit who has caused your word to be written, who for those that love you indwells them, and we ask his presence with us this morning and may he help us understand the words that we share so that we may be able to make it part of our lives today, I pray. And we ask these things with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning's topic is peace in turmoil. No doubt, as have I, you and everybody else has been affected by this COVID-19, which has turned the world upside down and in disarray. Not a single soul on this earth has not been affected in some way, shape or form. And even though we can see some signs of recovery, it will be a long time before things took to back to normal, if they ever will. We can see the effects of the epidemic all around us. Many have lost jobs, some have been put on hold, some people have been sick with it, others have even died, and some travel plans have been caused in disarray. Our movements have been restricted, and I could go on, but suffice it to say, we have all been affected in some way. So where is peace in all this turmoil? Where there, is there any comfort that we can derive in all of this? Well, I'm reminded of Jesus' words he spoke while here on earth. He was teaching the crowd that had gathered, and amongst other things he said these words that I were recorded for us in Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 to 30. Come unto me, all ye that labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn from me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Well, that's the King James translation. Perhaps a more modern one from the Living Bible may make it a little clearer. Come to me and I will give you rest. All of you who work so hard beneath a heavy yoke, wear my yoke for it fits perfectly and let me teach you for I am gentle and humble and you will shall find rest for your souls. For I give only light burdens and that comes from the Living Bible. This morning I want to dwell on the first part of verse 28. Come to me and I will give you rest. Or as it says in the King James, Come unto me, all ye that labour, and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Surely, with what's been going on around us today, it has been and still is a heavy burden. We have many, witnessed many heartaches and pains, and tele, our television screens and with the electronic media, it all gets around the world in a flash. 
and often it is live coming into our very living rooms and we feel the trauma of this heartache and pain. The reason why we are online today. All right, so how does Jesus' words give us peace and rest in a time like this? Pastor Rick, over the past weeks, has been preaching a series of new beginnings. And in one of them, he focused on Jesus calling his disciples. He shared how these men just left whatever they were doing and followed him, placing their faith and trust in him without any hesitation. Jesus today is saying to us, come to me and I will give you rest. His call is as valid today as it was when he was walking on earth. Today you can can hear him call, come to him, and he will give you rest. You and I, each one of us, can make use of that call today. No, this doesn't mean that the situation will go away. Because as we read further in the verse, wear my yoke, for it fits perfectly. And let me teach you, for I am gentle and humble, and you shall find rest for your souls, for I give you only light burdens. Instead of taking the burdens, the turmoil, or whatever it is away, Jesus comes alongside to share the burden. Not only the, makes the burden lighter, but we also have Jesus' presence alongside. The yoke that Jesus is talking about was used in that day to put animals together, to work together alongside each other, an older one teaching the young one, so that the young one would learn from the older one. So Jesus here says that he is coming alongside us to help and to teach us to shoulder the burden together no longer alone, no longer without someone to share the burden and the situation with. What peace can we derive from knowing that Jesus walks alongside us, giving us comfort and peace? Are you in turmoil? Are you burdened? Are you at wit's end, not knowing where to go or to turn? Come to Jesus. He will give you rest. In one of his sermons, Pastor Rick spoke about coming to Jesus, about repenting from our wrongdoings, turning around and going the other way. Many listeners watching today have already done so, but perhaps there is someone today who has not. If so, and you would like to know more about this, contact us at Allenbrook Baptist Church and we would be happy to share with you so you can know how to do that too. Some weeks ago, we celebrated Easter, a time when we remembered the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because of this, we today can have a relationship with Jesus as he died for our sin or wrongdoings and paid the price so we could go free. As we trust and accept this for ourselves, we are brought into, back into relationship with God and Jesus. In fact, the Bible tells us we become the children of God. How awesome is that? To be a child of the living God, the one who created everything, the one who has no equal is our Father, watching over us and caring for us. That in itself would give us peace and comfort even at this difficult time when all in this world is in turmoil and full of uncertainty. As we reflect on this time of Easter each year, we read the story in the Bible, we note that Jesus, as on this occasion, the night he was betrayed, spoke to his disciples, not of a situation they were in, but words of comfort and peace for turmoil that was about to enter their life with the impending death of the one they had followed for three years. You see, while in our first reading Jesus spoke of the situation we are in, here Jesus shows concern for his disciples and if we are his followers, then we are his disciples too. And so we too can take this in. He talks about things that were to happen of which they had no idea. He had foreknowledge of what was to come. 
This gives me great comfort knowing that God knows all about the past, present and future of my life. He can see what is coming up in my life and yours before we get to it. And so Jesus encourages his disciples and so also us with these words in John chapter 14. Let not your hearts be troubled. You are trusting God, now trust in me. There are many homes up there where my father lives and I'm going to prepare them for your coming. When everything is ready, then I will come and give you, get you so that you can also be with me where I am. If this weren't so, I would tell you plainly. And if you know where I'm going and how to get there, no, we don't, Thomas said. We haven't any idea where you are going, so how do we know the way? Well, Jesus told him, I am the way. Yes, and the truth and the life. No one can get to the Father except by means of me. This is from the Living Bible. Jesus knew what lay ahead for his disciples and so he wanted to give them words of comfort which they could hang on to when the time of turmoil and anxiety came. Words that the day we too can take to heart. Words that are true. Words that are life-giving. Words that never grow old but continue to give peace and comfort all the days of our lives. No matter what situation in life we find ourselves in, these words should give us peace of heart and mind. God's peace is like no other because there is no other like God. As we remembered back when we were celebrating Easter, Jesus gave his life in place of ours to pay the penalty God demanded for our wrongdoings, which we call sin. We also remembered the resurrection, the morning the grave was opened and Jesus came alive again later to ascend into heaven. Jesus told his disciples, don't be troubled. You believe in God, but you live also in me. Trust me, I have good news for you. I'm going to prepare a place for you, one which is not on earth, a far better place a place where we will live for eternity, a place of peace, a place so great and wonderful we cannot even imagine what it will be like. We read in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, but it is as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Despite the situation we find ourselves in today, whether of our own doing or COVID-19 virus or whatever other situation, Jesus says to us, let not your hearts be troubled. If we believe God, Jesus is saying to believe me also, trust in me for all your needs, not only now, but also for the life hereafter. This life and its problems is is not all there is. There is more. There is better. There is more wonderful things in store for those who believe Jesus and trust in him. We don't need to be troubled. An untroubled heart is at peace. God's peace, a peace that passes all understanding. We just read, eye has not seen, ear has not heard, and we can't even imagine what God has in store for those that place their faith and trust in him. When we have this knowledge and made it our own, we can cope with anything as he walks alongside, as he shares the load and strengthens and upholds us. He made this promise to his disciples and also to us the night before he went to the cross. He died, but he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and there he has promised to prepare a place for us. Had he not resurrected and ascended into heaven, none of this would make any sense or have any validity. He says, there are many homes up there where my father lives and I'm going to prepare them for your coming. He is there now, busy preparing, getting ready so that we will spend eternity with him. 
I hope that this assurance gives you hope, gives you peace in this time of turmoil, this time of uncertainty. It is something we can look forward to, knowing that this life is not all there is. No matter how bleak the outlook, no matter how much turmoil there is, no matter how violent a storm, there will be peace. There will be calm. I'm reminded of the storms that the disciples found themselves in. On one occasion, Jesus was walking on the water towards them and as he entered the boat, the the storm stilled. On another occasion, he was in the boat asleep. Even though Jesus was with them in the boat, they were still afraid. They certainly didn't have any peace about the situation. But Jesus calmed the storm when he was awakened. Perhaps you are in a storm while Jesus is outside your boat and he is walking towards you. Let him in. Let him come and calm your storm by placing your faith and trust in him. You can be assured he will come in if your faith and trust is genuine. Perhaps Jesus is already in your boat. And the storm is raging, but your faith needs reawakening and strengthening. Allow Jesus to be part of your life again. You trusted him for salvation. Now trust him in the storm. Come to me and I will give you rest, he says. No, the storms don't always pass us by. But remember, Jesus is there and he has the authority over the storm. Rest in that knowledge. Okay, you say, well, how do I know that all this is true? That if I place my faith and trust in him, that I will not come to some sticky end? We read in our second reading, when everything is ready, then I will come and get you, so that you can always be with me where I am. If this were not so, I would have told you plainly. Jesus says to his disciples, If what I am saying isn't true, I would tell you plainly that it's not so. We too can take heart in the fact that Jesus only ever tells the truth. How do we know? Well, here it is in verse 4. And you know where I am going and how to get there. No, we don't, Thomas said. We haven't any idea where you are going. So how do we know the way? Well, Jesus told him, I am the way. Yes, and the truth and the life. No one can get to the Father except by means of me. Jesus is the truth. Jesus means what he says. His words are infallible. He can only speak truth so we can have complete faith in what he says and that he will accomplish what he has promised to do. However, there are two more truths here that we need to recognise to have that peace in turmoil. The first is that Jesus is the way. There is no one else. There is no other way to get right standing with God to enable us to live with God for eternity. This is a very important truth. Not one manufactured by man, but the words spoken by Jesus himself. I am the way. Many people would like to get there, but think they can get there some other way, but there isn't any other way. It's not a case of all roads lead to Rome. There is only one way, and that is through Jesus. Now, the second truth is that Jesus is life. He and only he can give us eternal life, imparted to us as we place our faith and trust in the finished work on the cross so that in time we will be able to occupy those rooms, those mansions, houses. It depends on which translation you are reading. It's ours for free, ours for trusting God what that our, that our, sorry, ours for trusting God's word that our relationship with God can only be restored through our faith in Jesus. Peace in turmoil. Yes, it can be ours, even if the storm continues. With Jesus in our boat or in harness or yoke alongside, we can weather any storm 
Come what may, COVID-19 virus or not, we can have peace. In the same chapter of John, we read a few verses further down, verses 25 to 27. I am telling you these things now while I am still with you, speaking to his disciples. But when the Father sends the Comforter instead of me, and by Comforter I mean the Holy Spirit, he will teach you much as well as remind you of everything I myself have told you. I'm leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart, and the peace I give isn't fragile like the peace the world gives. So don't be troubled or afraid. Those who have accepted salvation through Jesus now have this comfort of the Holy Spirit indwelling them. We are guaranteed of this peace. We are guaranteed of the fulfilling of Jesus' promise. Therefore, we have no need to be troubled or afraid. We are under his protection. We are watched over by him. Yes, he is our peace in turmoil. Whether we find ourselves in it now or should further turmoil come in the future, we are in his hand. Come rest in him. Come walk with him. Come let his peace rule in your heart. If you are a follower of Jesus, strengthen yourself with this and know for a certainty that this is yours in Jesus. If you are not sure what to make of all of this and you would like to know more about it or want further explanation of what this means, please contact us at Allenbrook Baptist Church. We would only be too happy to help you. Peace in turmoil. It can be yours. Allow me to pray. Father, we thank you that despite what situation we find ourselves in, you can help. You can come in. You can still the storm. Lord, as we place our faith and trust in you, you've promised to come and indwell us and give us that peace that passes all understanding. May we know that love for a certainty. May we know that you walk with us each and every day. And may that be our peace in this time of turmoil, I pray. For Jesus' sake, amen.